Hi, I'm going to show you how to measure the dynamic range of an oscilloscope. Now, this actually might be important because when you're analysing, especially if you're a nerd on the EEV blog forum, like there are plenty of, um, and you want to compare oscilloscopes, and especially a 12-bit uh, one like this new Rigol HDO 4000 series, then, you know, if you're comparing like 12-bit scope and you want to compare the noise floor, you want to compare the effective number of bits and everything, anyway, you know, you have to make sure you're doing apples to apples uh, comparison and one of the things you need to know is well what is the full scale analog to digital converter range inside the scope what's it actually you know uh, doing so how do you measure that because most scopes of course will have like eight divisions vertically but it could be uh, more depending on the scope this one actually has eight divisions so let's go down to one volt uh, per division here you might think that the full scale analog to digital converter range in this thing is those eight divisions i.e it's one volt per division so it's eight volts peak to peak full scale but that's not actually the case because as I showed in the unboxing uh, and first play around with this video, you can see that actually um, this is a triangle wave. You can see it's actually clipped at the top. And if I actually stop that and then go like this, you can see that it's not actually clipped. It's, it does actually have some extra dynamic range, some extra sampling range outside of this window. But how much more? Well, that's what we're going to find out here. So the way you do this is you want to have a triangle wave. You can do it with a sine wave, but it's easier to see when waveforms are clipped with a triangle wave. So what I've got here is my Rigol uh, function generator. You can use, uh, use the best function generator you've got, but I'm going to generate a one kilohertz signal. Doesn't matter about the frequency really, but one kilohertz is just fine. Um, and then we can actually set the uh, peak to peak voltage here. Now make sure you use the high uh, Z or high impedance output. You don't want the 50 ohm termination because if you've used the 50 ohm termination, then uh, you have to factor in the accuracy of the 50 ohm load termination and the actual divider and the 50 ohm output in this and all that sort of stuff. So I prefer to use, you can, but I prefer to use the high Z. We're not talking about anything high frequency here so we don't have to worry about any of that um, you know signal integrity uh, stuff so um, high impedance output mode uh, one kilohertz and I've actually got an 8.6 volt peak to peak signal here but let's take this up to say 10 volts peak to peak here okay and then if we view this over on the scope here let's run it and then we'll go down here and we'll just verify that the, that the accuracy is the same on this uh, scope over here. There you go. The average volts peak to peak, 10.01, right? So it's pretty close to being spot on. So we can, you know, if both of these instruments, you know, roughly measure the same, then you can, like, we could get the accuracy spec of this thing and stuff like that. But, you know, if they both read the same, then, well, that's good enough for Australia. Okay, so what we want to do now is actually, uh, we, with the 10 volt signal, let's turn it back to one volts per division. And you can see how it uh, goes over scale here. So what we want to do is we want to press stop like this and then go up a voltage range and you can see that it's actually clipped. So somewhere between that 10 volts and 8 volts is where our actual uh, dynamic range lies. So all we have to do now is adjust the um, output voltage on the uh, scope to actually see at what point it doesn't clip. So I've already done this, I know what it is, but uh, let's set it to say 8.8 .8 volts uh, peak to peak. So we, uh, you know, you lower it down, lower it down. So let's do 8.8 .8 volts. Let's put it back to one volt per division here and let's run it. Okay, and then we stop it and then we can go down a range and you can see, oh, is it clipped or not? Well, we can actually zoom in like this. We can adjust our position, but we because it chops off the waveform here, not all scopes will operate uh, the same way here, but we can just uh, put that back. And so we can zoom in, just reset that. And no, we can go up a range. So there we go, we can get it to there. And then let's just zoom back in and then we change our horizontal time base. And you can see that, oh, it's just, just clipped there just clipped now unfortunately we can't just leave it zoomed in like this and then just uh, tweak our value slightly down here because if we actually run it okay you'll see that either we can't see our signal or it's uh change because we've changed the offset okay so when we uh, redo this every time we do it we have to reset the offset like this so we have to reset it back to 
zero position like this. I forgot to tell you that up front. You've got to have zero uh, position like this because then we've got a symmetrical waveform uh, like this because if you have an offset, okay, look, I'll, I'll show you that we can actually, I'll adjust this. So I'll put in a 10 volt signal peak to peak and you can see that it's absolutely clipped there. But if we adjust it like this, then, oh, oh yeah, the triggering's a problem. But if we adjust it like this and we run it, then it's not clipping anymore because we've adjusted that because it's not outside the positive uh, range of the, um, essentially, the analog to digital converter, if you assume that like it's in the middle, uh, for example. So, yeah, you need to actually center that like that and then, and only then, can you actually get a proper, uh, uh, true peak-to-peak -peak reading. So anyway, I'll go to uh, 8.75, you can see there, that's what I've dialed in and it measures pretty close to that and this one will not, if I turn it back to 1 volt and I stop it and then I adjust like that and we zoom in and if I expand that we'll find that bingo, 8.75 volts there, there's no clip in. We can't actually get the uh, value anymore because it, it calculates that uh, from the screen and it can't actually doesn't have a full uh, sample to actually gather that data from so it's no good anymore. But anyway somewhere between 8.75 volts and 8.8 .8 volts uh, peak to peak is our full scale range of our uh, analog to digital converter or maybe not it could actually be just where the input amplifier clips. But you can't really know that, uh, the true range of the analog to digital converter, unless you're, unless the manufacturer tells you what it is, you know, you've got the schematic and you can reverse engineer it, or potentially you could feed in like a one bit signal, like a one, <laughs> one bit uh, amplitude level signal until you actually see like one bit change or something like that, but then you're down in the noise and it's horrible and everything. So we're just going to assume that the range is, um, in this particular case, 8.75 volts peak to peak. So if we get our confuser out here, 8.75 volts peak to peak divided by 4096, because it's a 12 bit uh, converter here, that will give us an individual bit of 2.14 or thereabouts millivolts uh, per bit and that's how um, we can calculate and then you can use this information to then compare oscilloscopes because I've been downloading uh, raw binary waveform uh, data in a standardized way so that the EV log forum nerds can actually uh, compare it with uh, the equivalent siglent 12-bit uh, scope and stuff like that so um, yeah if you want to know what I've been doing I've been basically uh, to get um, the raw data on this, I'll show you what I've, uh, I've well, that I've standard on, I, I've standardized on anyway. So what I've done is I've disconnected it like this and I've uh, set it, um, well, I've done it with one meg samples and I've also done it with uh, the full 250 meg and that's where you'll get the most uh, data as well. And I set the time base to one millisecond like this, uh, for example, and I've got, um, and I've done it with both 50 ohm input termination on and also just one meg input termination so just leaving it flapping around in the breeze and I've also done it with the full 200 megahertz bandwidth and the 20 megahertz bandwidth and then I save the binary data the raw binary data to a USB uh, stick you can also save it as a uh, CSV uh, file as well but the forum nerds uh, requested a binary file, so I've provided a binary file. And yes, it does actually take a long time to save the data. It takes several minutes to save the full 250. So if I stop this, okay, there's 200 at 4 gig sample, and you have to know the sample rate as well. And that changes to 50 meg samples per second if you go to the 1 meg memory depth. So you have to know that as well. And, oh, is that a bug? Is that a bug? Because we're stopped. That should be 50 meg sample. We're in stop mode at the moment. Will it come? Yeah, it changed back. There you go. There's a, there's a little bug. Um, it was showing it didn't automatically change that meg samples until I actually pressed start. I guess that's all right because it still had. Oh no, that's probably not a bug because it's it had it still had that existing data in memory because it was in stop mode. So you don't. I, no, I'm going to, no, I take that back. Sorry, Rigo, I don't think that's a bug. I think that's a feature in that the memory was, the data was still in the memory, so it should display, should match the memory. So, yeah.
I think, yeah, no, I'm going to take that back. Take it back. I won't edit that part out because that's interesting. Um, but yeah, this, you need to know the sample rate as well if you know if you're calculating all sorts of stuff. You can get the effective number of bits. As I said uh, in the uh, first impression, so this Rigol only say it's greater than eight bits, effective number of bits for a 12-bit converter um, scope. They don't give you any more information than that. So anyway, um, the forum nerds will be added. So someone on the forum who's got the 12-bit uh, uh, Rigol um, HD scope, then uh, yeah, they can get the same measurements and then we've got the raw binary data and you can compare the two and argue until the cows come home about which one's better. Anyway, that is an interesting way to measure the uh, dynamic range of the scope. So you can do this on your um, scope, find out, like, <laughs> like especially on an 8-bit converter, how how many bits is it uh, pissing away outside of the screen you're not capturing? Sometimes that's good, you want that, you know, because uh, you want to like zoom into detail, but then you want to zoom out and capture data later. In this particular case, it would have been nice to, I don't know, select it or something, have a selection for like how much dynamic range you want. I don't know, does any scope have that feature actually that allows you to adjust? the uh, dynamic range of the scope. Of course, on an 8-bit converter, it's like, uh, you, you, know, you haven't got much to spare outside of the uh, windows. In fact, you've only got 256 uh, samples and your screen is going to be more than 256 pixels. So, like, you don't even have a sample per pixel already, let alone outside. But when you've got, like, a 12-bit converter like this one, you know, you've got 4,096 bits to uh, play with and uh, and this is only a 800-pixel um, screen from top to bottom so you know you've got greater than one pixel per thing anyway it'd be nice to be able to um adjust something like that let us know in the comments if you know a scope that's got that but anyway that's how you measure um the in theory the uh, adc dynamic range of a scope just put in a uh, triangle wave is easy and um just see when it clips so I hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. And I'll link to the EV blog forum thread where people are discussing, measuring, comparing the noise floor of this thing. Catch you next time.